How's it growing? Terminating cover crops in a no-till garden. This is part three in the series, Cover Crops to Kill Nematodes. <coughs> it's pronounced nematode. I've heard it pronounced both ways, and I've always pronounced it this way. I know, but soil biologist Dr. Langingham pronounces it nematode. Right, she does. And that's the correct way. All right, all right, nematode. So how do we terminate these cover crops? We simply pull them out. Oh no, we don't. This is a regenerative garden. You know, no-till, minimal disturbance. You're right again. By leaving the roots in the soil, we're improving that soil. Minimal disturbance. And so what do we mean by disturbance? Well, that can come in the form of tilling, digging, or even a chemical disturbance. Chemical disturbance? Yeah, we're talking no-till, no chemical. Most people wouldn't make that connection. Really, anything that disturbs the biology in the soil is a disturbance. Yeah, so how are we gonna terminate these cover crops without chemicals, herbicides, without pulling them out? I've got great news. This can be done. Let's get right into exactly what I did. And later I'll share more about my experience with these cover crops. There he is. Also stick around to the end of the video where I'm excited to share what Santiago at Tree Amigos Growers shared with me about his father, Rafael. Hey. I actually got chills while he was telling me about this. <laughs> and more about that later. As for terminating these cover crops, I did pretty much what Tree Amigos Growers recommends with a couple of slight changes. As for these three, they recommend quickly chop it down when the flower heads begin to form. Leave it on the soil as mulch or bury it with two or three inches of soil and immediately plant into it. And that's basically what I did, except I used a layer of compost and then on the very top, a layer of very woody compost that is a semi mulch type of thing. And later I'll use wood chip mulch. But at this point, I let it sit for at least a week before I planted those beds for the fall and winter garden. This hedge trimmer worked pretty well. You could just use simple clippers or I prefer to use hedge trimmers. This one probably should have been terminated sooner, but I left it for the pollinators. I wanted to chop up the stalks into pieces, so I started at the very top and worked my way down. I was worried the stalks would grow back, but that didn't happen with the sun hemp. This bed was terminated six weeks ago and nothing that I chopped down has grown back. And my fall and winter garden has a nice early start. I'll talk about those screens later. Sure, the sun hemp did well, but what happened to the other crops? Tell them about that. I'm getting to it, cowboy. Like I said in part two, the other two, Kodiak brown mustard and sorghum Sudan grass, didn't do well in my garden beds this year. So next year, I'll try planting them earlier in the spring to see if that makes any difference. And the mustard self-terminated. Ooh, self-termination. That's a fancy way of saying it died. Ah. <sighs> I've, I've terminated some of the sun grass, but decided to let the rest of it coexist with my fall garden until those flower heads begin appearing. And then I'll snip it down low to keep it from coming back. If necessary, I'll place biomass from my favorite chop and drop on it with that layer of compost. All right, one minor challenge that I had with terminating the sun hemp is that after 90 days of growth, the stalks can be a little tough to cut, especially with these hedge trimmers. So that's where I switched to the clippers. Now, fortunately, I found that on a small scale, as opposed to farms, terminating cover crops are much more simple than I expected. If you're like me and you don't quite get the biomass that you expected from, like say maybe the sun hemp or mustard, in my case, the mustard and the Sudan grass, you can supplement it with chop and drops. I supplemented mine with Moringa, Tithonia, AKA Mexican Sunflower, and Pigeon Pea. If you have a better experience with growing Kodiak brown mustard, first of all, let me know in the comment. In fact, I'd like to know if you've had any experience with any of these. Secondly, there's a unique thing to know about terminating this mustard if you wanna get the benefits from the glucosinolates in this cover crop that kill nematodes, excuse me, nematodes, 
and some disease-causing organisms such as Fusarium wilt, which is a big one that it kills, and it prevents broadleaf weeds. But to get those benefits from this mustard, there's this thing called biofumigation, where you chop it up finely and bury it into the soil. And I'll have a link for more about that if you want to know more in the description below. But we're not going to disturb that soil if we don't have to, right? What I would do is simply bury it under a layer of compost. Let's talk a little bit about what I did when I replanted these beds. First, I used these old screens to filter the sunlight which alleviates the plants from the heat stress at both the beginning and the end of the cool growing season. And that layer of compost and biomass can be a little much for some of these new seedlings. So I use either perlite or vermiculite to help give the roots a nice healthy start and so they're not so overwhelmed by the compost. Normally I use a fine vermiculite, but the supply chain is still a little screwed up from the pandemic, so that was really hard to find. So I'm using this perlite. And I'll add a layer of aged wood chip mulch to these beds. And I'll be getting a fresh mulch delivery very soon. And I'll add that as soon as all the seedlings have popped up. Not all of them have sprouted up in places where I've done direct seeding. I am in Davie, Florida. When I made that trip to Tree Amigos to buy cover crop seeds, I came away with something more than I expected. There we go. Tree Amigos Growers. I love this place. There he is. Yeah, how's it going? Good to see you. And there's Jason helping out someone. What Santiago told me about his father blew me away. Santi, so you were saying that your father, he's certified now with Dr. E. Langingham's Soil Food Web. He passed the course with pretty high yeah, number grades. So I don't know what certification or any certification he's got, but he's definitely going to the next step of that course, which is now going to talk about being certified to be a consultant. Right, so if that's not happened yet, this is the process he's going through. Um, like I said, he's an amazing student and he really knows how to take that information and make it practical. Yes, there's certification to become, become a lab technician right. and then there's a certification to where they can help farmers transition to regenerative agriculture. Yes. A few days ago, I got to talk to Raphael, who just happened to be making his first batch of biocomplete compost, as Dr. Ingham teaches. So that's what I'm doing now. So probably after this, I'm gonna take the final exams and become a lab tech. Great. And then I'm gonna follow the next step to get a consultant uh, certification. That is awesome, and he's helping to transition you guys. 100%. Tree and me, that's, that is so exciting. This is, this is I the, love this that. This is the way we've always been headed, yeah. but never understood exactly how we're gonna get it done, but taking every step we can in small scales to get it done. We're all learning this. Like in the past a number of months, I've been learning this myself, and it's all about moving in a different direction that's better for the soil, and it's a regenerative gardening and I'm excited that you guys are moving in that direction too. Thank you. Yeah, we're Good. really excited about it. Yeah. I actually got chills while he was telling me about this. It's awesome. I'll have more on Raphael in a future episode. Sante's father, Raphael, is, is such a valuable contribution to not only Tree Amigos growers, but our garden community here in South Florida. And I'm so proud that he's doing this. My final thoughts on the cover crops. Well, I have a very good feeling that I'll be doing a follow-up video on this at some point, probably next year. And when I do, I'll have a link up here and a link in the description below. Regardless, be sure to check out my nematode, <coughs> nematode, yes, nematode playlist. I have a nematode playlist on the end screen of this video. Hey, if you got something out of this, I hope you did please consider giving a thumbs up like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and finally, I'll take this one, live regeneratively and let's grow together.